Okay, let's start the chapter. Okay. So in the chapter 12, we will be talking about the factor of production. And in this chapter, we'll be demonstrating that the demand for supply for the labor uh, depend on the productivities of the labor. We're also gonna explain how monopsonies, trade unions and trade associations impact the labor market and explain why factors that are highly inelastic in the supply require a special analysis. And also we will recognize the relevance of a right rate of exploitation in the natural resource market, explain why the demand for uh, capital good depends on the productivity of capital good, explain the view on the ultimate source of profit. So what's a product market? The market for consumers, consumer goods and service, that's a product market. The factor market, the market for factors of productions. So the factor of productions, what is the factor of production? You know, goods um, that is used for productions, uh, labors, also is part of factor market. So in the labor market, um, we have what you call the marginal revenue product. Now we're just gonna reverse it. Um, now there is uh, the, the, the firms needing laborers to produce. So the laborers is the suppliers, labor market is the suppliers, here, the firms is the con consumers. This is, we need to just adjust that the mentally. So the marginal revenue product, the increase in a firm total revenue that result from use of one labor of units. So I have two people, I produce four units, I bring one person, I produce five units or seven units. So one more labor added. So the marginal revenue product or MRP is equal with marginal pro production multiplied by price. So when I'm producing instead of five, I'm producing one more. So that's uh, marginal revenue product or MRP, which is made of MP multiplied by the price. The marginal revenue product or MRP is, is as we say, changing in quantity, you, from five you became producing seven because you added one more labor, the changing in labor, multiply by the, uh, the price. And you have, as you see here, marginal revenue product or MRP. So changing by total revenue, because this multiplied by this becomes total revenue, changing by the labor, how many labor divided the total changing of the labor. If we look at it here in the data as in numbers, we notice that that uh, uh, hours of labor is zeros, the total production is zeros. You don't have any marginal of a product of labors and the unit of the price is stable, stays there, does not change. So your total revenue is the units that you're producing, uh, which is uh, zeros by five, which is that much is, is doing. So the hours or the total revenues is you making zeros. In this case, your total revenues is your labor hour that you they spend on it, multiply, uh, uh, I mean, total production multiplied by total units is 15 hours. So this is how you done the calculation. So the marginal revenue for product of laborers is the fact that what you do here 
is by bringing two hours becomes 37.5. And then the production, the marginal revenue is a 22.5. So the firm marginal revenue product of a labor, if the marginal revenue production product is more than wage. So you bring one person, you pay him $10, but what is producing an extra product worth of $15 you're paying, uh, you, you're selling it. So here is the MRP is a higher than wage. The last worker, which is means the last worker was profitable and should hire more. If the MRP start being less than wage, the last worker was a loss and the labor should be reduced. Thus, the MRP is equal with the wage, is the optimal, uh, and the MRP determines uh, the demand for the labor. The supply of the labor, you have the labor force, which is the total number of people over the age of 15, who are willing and able to work. Now, the labor force supply is the total hours that those in the labor force are willing to work. The labor force supply curve, the supply of labor is upward sloping, but it's relatively inelastic. Uh, and we said in elastic that doesn't change that much by increasing the prices. At some point, and the reason, because at some point people prefer uh, leisure to more hours of work. You wanna have more fun over more hours of work, even if the wage are high. So it's upward sloping supply of labor curve. Now the market equilibrium wage um, rate, there are both supply and demand curve underlying every way. It's a typical supply and demand and the market demand is the sum of MRP curve for all firms, the curves that we saw in the earlier chapter. The market supply is, as we said, is inelastic from the previous slide because at what point people will spend leisure than ha having fun than really want to work. The firm equilibrium quantity of labor. In competitive market, the market determines the wage rate. And so the firm is, it is a fix because supply is constant uh, at certain and can produce. So the MRP is fixed. The firm does face a perfect elastic supply curve. That's in the long run. And the individual firms force a perfectly elastic supply curve and uh, uh, the intersection of MRP gives an equilibrium of you know, quantity hours here. Let's say there is a high, high salaries. You will see there is more people coming in from other countries and uh, more supplies is happening. So just to understand if the output can be sold at for $3 per unit, then you will have, you know, one with one hour labor work, the total product is a three, your marginal product is three producing from zero three, and your marginal revenue three multiplied by three is $9. And if the wage market is $9 an hour, then what the profit maximization is when these are equal, is in other words, when the MRP said, equal with the wage rate. This is where the equilibrium, we talked about it, which is at $9, which is this one, and uh, uh, six hours labor 
which gives you a 25 unit. So you need for six hour labor, 25 unit, and your marginal product is extra three units. So you start from three, you kind of start declining, and then your marginal revenue product is $9, because it's $9 equal with the salary that you are paying $9 per hour. So in the monopsony, a market structure in which there is only one buyer. We said in monopoly is only one seller. Here is only one buyer. In monopsony labor market, additional labor can be hired only if a higher wage rate is offered to all workers. The labor supply curve, you know, we, we know that is a upward uh, slopes upward and the cost of hiring an extra worker is called the marginal wage cost. It's just when you extra product you produce the marginal cost. This is a marginal wage cost. So the productivity and the real wage. In the productivity, when we talk about it and real wage, not the nominal wage. The real wage is the purchasing power of the nominal wage that is the nominal wage divided by the price of labor. Uh, and we spoke about it in chapter two, I believe. And the nominal wage is a wage rate expressed as a dollar and cents figure. And we spoke about it saying, uh, somebody who makes $1,000 in India can purchase much more with it than somebody who makes $1,000 in Canada. That's what you call a real wage, but the both nominal wage is 1,000. So the real wage is the nominal wage divided by the price level. Now, um, an economy, real output and real income are the same thing. Uh, and that's justified by the fact that your real income can have the demand for real output and they have to meet each other and on an equilibrium point. Does an economy real income or real wage rate per worker can only increase at about the same rate as the output per worker? Worker goes in, increase his output, his real wage increases, and in general, that he can buy them more. Because he's increasing his output, he's getting more income, and his more income converted to more real income, and he can purchase uh, outputs. So the summary, both supply and demand are determined the wage rate. There are a distinct long run trend of the growth in both the, so the labor supply and the demand. The average real weight for a labor for the whole economy has increased over time. And this is, is closely related to increase in the labor productivity they produce more. Here comes in the trade union and the association. The economic objective of them is increase the compensation received by their members, the workers, and, and or improve the working condition of their members. In the trade union association, their approach is first increase the demand for their members through by advertising the employer's product or their members' skills. And also they can, uh, their approach is restrict the supply of labor. So they don't let the, the, uh, the firm hire more laborers, uh, replacing the expensive one by convincing and through also by convincing the government to create a legal qualification for the worker and then restricting a number of people obtaining such a qualification like we really see in, uh, uh, within the doctors and lawyers. And also the other approach is negotiating a fixed wage rate above the equilibrium. So the market willing to 
supply at $10, they negotiate at $14, for example. The wage differentiation, we see there is a different salaries and reason or causing for that is the level of a human capital varies among individuals. Some of them have enough, but more than enough and less than enough. Some jobs also involve more risk than others. Some jobs have unpleasant characteristics. Um, some jobs have attractive non pecuniaries or non monetary benefit. And there is maybe a, there is a discrimination of labor markets. And each one is a subject we were able to be discussed and negotiated also. But in overall, the, we need to draw the supply and the demand of labor curve for any economy, just uh, drawing supply and demand regularly. Indicate the equilibrium and the quantities. So the equilibrium and quantities, as let's say, uh, D1 and C1 is a W1 and the quantity is here. Now, increased demand for labor and restrict the supply of labor. So we have an increased demand. So there is a shift in uh, for uh, the demand because we said here is the labors and this is supply of the labors and this is demand, which is the firms. So what we'll see, we will see a shift out by the demand, which is they increase the labor salaries, but the quantity is remain the same. Now, um, <clears throat> is the new wage, which is W2, to rate higher or lower? Well, definitely you see is a higher because the demand for labor has shift out. So the, it's higher. Now, is the new quantity or lower, is the new quantity higher or lower? than before, then it's depend on whether the supply moves more than, less than, or the same amount as the demand. We, we said, we saw, we saw in the supply and demand, here is depend. So if there is a shift out from demand, we notice the wage is more and the quantity is the same. Now it depends whether this will be shifting out, shifting in, or stays at S. So what's the reasons that demand might increase? Uh, and two reasons that the supply might decrease. So what's the reason to demand shift out might increase or the supply might decrease. In the labor demand increase, which is the D from D1 to D2, is the productivity raises and total output for the economy, economy increases. When the productivity raises means the cost gets lower and then means more profit. So there is more demand for more employees and labor supply decreasing because you know uh, dropping in a population dropping in the participation rate people don't want to work anymore now just a definition what you call the economic rent is the return to any factor of production above what is required to keep the factor in its present use so i'm driving a car and I decide to rent it. This is what makes it an economic rent. So that the return to any factor of production above what required to keep the factor in its present. It, it, the benefit I'm getting is a 1000, but if I'm renting it is the car, I'm getting 1500. And then what's the transfer earning is a necessary payment that a factor of production must earn in order for it to remain in its present use. So if I'm not utilizing the car and I'm paying 1500, I'd rather to return it 
and keep my 1500 but if i'm making 1500 income from renting the car of 1500 then i'll keep it or more so if a land has only one use its supply is inelastic there's a limited land so the price of the land is a demand driven the land is supplied one so it depends on the demand is the price is driven as you see here in the graph same thing with the natural resources in every in the very wrong run the supply of oil is fixed because whether the price goes up you you demand less price goes down you want more you need to do a production so the supply of the oil is fixed the, uh, unless they improve in the technology or increase the technology today more is for the sales at the higher price the optimum rate of extraction of oil depends on the rate at which the price of oil is changing and the interest rate so if the price of oil goes higher there is more extraction of oil but also you need to buy equipment to extract this oil how much you're paying for these equipment as a you, you know you're getting loan or something the interest rate of it the market for capital good, the demand for capital good is derived from the marginal revenue of the capital. So we said that the MRP of, a, of capital is the additional benefit from employment of the next unit of capital. And we spoke about this in chapter nine. The demand for good is inversely related to the cost of financing. So the higher interest rate, the less you're interested to buy goods. So it has a reverse uh, relation. Now the demand for capital good can also be uh, affected by improvement in technologies. So uh, you could have some pro uh, equipment that is going obsolete, existing capital equipment becomes obsolete, so you need to buy new equipment, or you cannot produce high-end or good quality product with your machines because there's a new machines coming in, so the demand for a newer version increases. If the capital goods are more productive than the labor, firm will substantial labor capital for a labor when you and it's a natural when if we, when the machinery can produce and more effective more productive than a labor you replace the labor with these machineries assuming you're minimizing the cost too the factor of substitution effect the phenomena of one factor replacing another factor as a result of technology growth change as a factor of substitutions so you're changing your equipment from your regular to a, a automatic chainsaw for example the factor of output effect is the phenomena of raising the total output leading to an increased labor uh, demand for a labor so um if uh, the phenomena of raising the total output is the fact I'm increasing to and increase the demand for labor. I'm increasing, I want to increase my output so I have a higher demand for labors. So in this chapter, the role of productivity and other factors in the demand for labor, economic rent and transfer earning, the short and long run supply for natural resource, the demand for capital good relatively to the laborers, and to view the other source of economic profit. Thank you.